Hello everybody, today I am going to show you how to properly use the FFT class inside of the Juice framework. So, this is a bunch of code that I'm going to upload to GitHub so that you can use it in your own project if you want or just study it, whatever you'd like. Most of the, um, most of the code inside a process block is just keeping track of circular buffers. So, and then most of the actual processing is being done inside of this function right here. Right now, I just have two FFTs, one for forward transformations, one for inverse ones, and then I have a uh, windowing function. Okay, so this is a graphic drawn by SignalSmith over on the Audio Programmer Discord. He's an extremely smart audio programmer that has been doing this shit way longer than I have. What we're trying to do is we're trying to kind of read audio. We're trying to get a chunk of it, right? What we usually do when we use the FFT is we have a 75% overlap between the blocks. So that means like it'll read this audio. So those two consecutive chunks, three fourths of it will be the exact same audio. So that's why it's really useful to use circular buffers for it. So after we put this into a circular buffer and then get the audio out, we're going to use a windowing function. And the reason why we do this is because like, okay, if I open up MS Paint, right? So you notice how this starts down here, but it ends up here. The FFT is going to assume that anything you pass into it is like cyclical. Like it basically what that means is it's going to assume that it repeats forever. So what's going to happen is it's going to just assume that it should be looking like this and so on so on forever so there's going to be these like massive gaps that are going to create like clicks basically because it's instantly jumping down in position so what we're going to do is we're going to use the windowing function to make sure that the beginning and the end start at zero so this is going to prevent a ton of clicking noises and we do this before we actually pass it into the FFT and after we get it out of the FFT. The reason that we do it after we get it out as well is because if you change literally anything, it's going to you're going to end up with the same problem. So you're basically just trying to get those two points to be equal again. Then we add that like windowed chunk with the rest of the windowed chunks that are going to have the same 75% overlap as when we got them, essentially. So that's kind of the broad overview of what we're doing. It's not as simple as just using this function. You also have to do a bunch of weird stuff with this. Now, the reason why is because the Fourier transform is going to return a bunch of complex numbers. Now, that's not really useful because usually when you look at a wavetable editor like Serum or something, it's going to have magnitudes and phases that you can edit. Now, in order to get those, you have to essentially like create a complex number and then the, uh, the first part is going to be the real part, I believe, and then the second part is going to be the imaginary part. And then you need to perform like, uh, I think this is the absolute, well actually no, it's not the absolute value because that's a complex, I don't know what these do with complex numbers specifically but that's essentially how you have to do it. You have to use those specific math functions and then you will get the correct magnitude and phase. And then in order to transform it back before you do the inverse transform, you actually have to use um, sine and cosine and add them, not add them. You have to multiply them in this very specific way and do a bunch of stuff. It's really weird, and I'm not exactly sure why the math behind it is the way it is, but it just is. Okay, you just gotta believe me. This works. Let me actually blend the thing. Hello? Okay, okay so it works. This is where we are adding it with the 75% overlap. And another thing that's really important you have to also, if you're doing 75% overlap specifically, you have to multiply the output by two thirds. There's a very, very weird math formula, and I'm not sure exactly what it was, but essentially, like, um, yeah, you just have to do it because otherwise it'll be way too loud. 
and then you won't be able to perfectly reconstruct the audio. And uh, I forgot to mention for the windowing function, I'm actually using the um, Han windowing function. If you know more about this stuff, you might use a different type, but like if you're watching this video, you probably don't know what you're doing, so just, just use the Han windowing. Yeah, honestly, like this code kind of sucks, but it works. Another important thing. Okay, so whenever you edit the uh, phase and magnitude after you've done the uh, forward transform, you're going to want to only edit like the first half of the stuff you get back. So right now I have 256 magnitudes and 256 phases that I'm getting back. What you're actually going to get back is it's going to look like this. It's going to be the exact same thing, but like, ah, uh... oh, shit. It's going to be mirrored down the middle. Yeah, so we're just converting it back to complex numbers, putting that in the inverse transform, windowing that. Yep, I mean, most of this is really just the ugly code that handles the circular buffers. But yeah, I mean, hopefully you can use this as a like resource to kind of just like look at if you're stuck trying to use the FFT. It took me a very long time to learn how to use it just because it's really complicated and I mostly just had to do a lot of forum searching and like discord searching. So yeah, I mean, if you have any questions about this, feel free to just leave a comment and I can try to help you. Um, I'm not really an expert though, I'm just some like random fuck that just decided to program some shit, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but uh, yeah, I hope this helps, and uh, peace out.